Good morning, and welcome to Trinity United's worship service. Thanks for joining us, and thank you to Michelle for leading us in worship this morning while Reverend Tracy is on holidays. As well, thanks to Anne for reading the scripture. We look forward to seeing many of you when you come and pick up your cards that the congregation has put together in a couple of weeks. Take care, have a great week, and enjoy the service. Whether in the morning, or the afternoon, or the evening, any time is the best time to worship. You, O Holy One, created us for worship and to give praises and thanksgiving. We rejoice at all opportunities that come our way to worship God, our Creator. My mother, who is my brother, all those who gather round Jesus Christ, spirit blown people, born from the gospel, sit at the table round Jesus Christ. Differently able, differently labeled, widen the circle round Jesus Christ. Crutches and stigmas, cultures and enigmas, all come together round Jesus Christ. Love will relate us, color or status, can segregate us round Jesus Christ. Family failings, human derailings, all are accepted round Jesus Christ. By one vision, met for one mission, we claim each other round Jesus Christ. Here is my mother, here is my brother, kindred and spirit, Jesus Christ. Hi, I am Maya. What is your name? Super! I have a story to tell you. It is called Stone Soup. Are you ready? Fabulous! Let's begin. Once upon a time, there was a poor village filled with people who did not like to share. They locked their doors and windows tight and kept what little food they had to themselves. One day, a stranger passed into the village. He was very tired and hungry from his journey. He stopped at the first house and knocked on the door, hoping there was food inside. The woman opened the door only a tiny crack. Who are you? the woman asked the stranger. I am a tired and hungry traveler, he responded. Please, 
May I have something to eat? There is hardly any food here, said the woman. In fact, I doubt you will find anyone who has extra food to spare. We are all poor and hungry, too. The woman closed the door. The traveler, although he was tired and hungry, was not ready to give up. He picked up a large round stone from the ground and knocked once more at the door. The lady came to the door again, opening it only halfway. Yes, she asked. Since you are poor like me, perhaps you would like to have some of my stone soup. Stone soup? The woman laughed as she looked at the stone in his hand. You can't make soup from a stone. I have done it before, replied the traveler. The woman had never seen anyone make soup from a stone before, but since she was hungry too, she invited him in. Then she lit the fire and placed a kettle of water on top and opened her windows to let out some heat. The traveler placed the stone inside the water until it boiled. He sipped a spoonful of the hot liquid. It's almost done, he said. But if you had just a little salt and butter, the soup would taste so much better. The woman went to her cupboard and returned with salt and butter. Just as the traveler was pouring them in the pot, the woman's husband returned home. In his hands were carrots and potatoes. What are you making? said the woman's husband. Stone soup, replied the woman and the traveler. Impossible, shouted the husband. It's almost finished, the traveler assured the husband as he tasted another spoonful. But it would be nicer if we added some carrots and potatoes. Also hungry, the husband agreed and dropped the carrots and potatoes into the pot. Soon, the smell of the soup drifted out of her house windows and down the lane. One neighbor, who usually stayed inside, wandered out and followed the smell all the way to the first house, where he heard them talking about stone soup. Is the stone soup ready now? The woman and her husband asked the traveler. Yes, but it could be even better if we had some turnips and beans, he replied. I have some, yelled the neighbor who was watching from the window. The neighbor, curious to taste soup that was made from a stone, returned with turnips and beans. He poured them into the pot, and the smell drifted even further down the lane. Word about a strange traveler making soup out of a single stone drew many villagers out of their homes. They followed the delicious smell. Is the stone soup ready now? asked the villagers when they arrived. Yes, but I remember having stone soup with chicken and broth and stew once, he recalled. I have chicken said a farmer, who ran home to get some. And I have broth, exclaimed another neighbor who ran to fetch it. The farmer returned and placed pieces of chicken into the pot. When the other neighbor added the broth, the pot was so full it almost spilled over. The traveler lifted a spoon to his lips and tasted it. Perfect, he exclaimed. Then he served a bowl of stone soup for every single one of the villagers to taste. It's magic! The villagers cried out, seeing how much soup he had made. Delicious! cried out another villager. But where can we get a magic stone? Surely this one has been used up. The traveler shook his head and pulled the stone out of the pot. The stone was still whole. The villagers realized that the delicious and plentiful soup did not come from the stone. The traveler drank up the leftover soup 
and went on his journey. From that day on, the villagers shared what they had with each other, and the village became a happy place. The scripture reading today is taken from John 6, 1 to 15, and it's the new international version. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will that go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. May God bless this reading of his holy word. Amen. One of the things that we as a church family do best is food. We can all remember the potluck lunches, fundraising dinners, and pancake breakfasts. And as we start to move back into the way things used to be, with some changes and safety protocols, of course, hopefully we will be able to gather together to eat again in the near future. In our scripture reading today, the disciple John tells the story of the loaves and the fishes. The feeding of the great crowd, as John calls it, is the only miracle that Jesus performed that is described in all four of the Gospels. It was almost Passover in the Jewish year, and it was one of the main feasts. People had heard of the healing miracles that Jesus had done for the sick and afflicted, and they were starting to follow him around, hoping to see one of those miracles for themselves. Jesus' disciples had walked a ways up a big hill and settled down to listen to Jesus' teachings. Jesus saw a large crowd of people making their way up the hill as well. And it is nearing evening. The disciples are concerned that the people will go hungry and their solution is to send them away. But instead, Jesus asks Philip, who was from that area. Where are we going to buy bread to feed all of these people? And Philip replies, half a year's wages would not be enough bread for each one to have even a bite. Immediately afterwards, Andrew, who has found a boy, tells Jesus the boy has five loaves and two fishes. And then he adds, but how far will they go among so many? So there is the problem. There is a great need and they do not have enough. This sounds like our story, Stone Soup, 
that we heard in children's time. The villagers were convinced that they did not have enough. They could not share with others because they were worried about themselves. The disciples were worried about the large mob, worried that they wouldn't have a bite to eat and that the people would go hungry. So there is the problem, as we said. There is great need and they do not have enough. Often we're overwhelmed by the size of the problem. We hear this when there are social or political problems that require an infusion of resources. How can we help with what little we have? We don't even know how we will make it ourselves. Or how can we feed so many? How can we fund so many? We have so little and the need is so great. What we can do is only a drop in the bucket. We don't have enough money to help out. We don't have what it takes. A wise man was once asked, how do you eat an elephant? His reply, one bite at a time. Jesus works with small things. He works with a stone to create a delicious soup. He works with a small boy's lunch, loaves and fishes to feed 5,000 or more people. And he works with us, the talents and the resources that he has given to us the small things that we have a tendency to hoard, but he wants us to share them with others. I have spoken before about each of us being perfect for our purpose. God has equipped each of us with the talents and the resources and the time and the energy to do his work. We just have to be willing to share. Now, the story in the Bible doesn't tell us exactly how Jesus accomplished his miracle. Some people speculate that seeing the young boy share his small lunch inspired them to reach into their bags and their pockets, to share the little things that they had brought with them with others around them. Very similar to the making of stone soup. But regardless of how Jesus' miracle was accomplished, it was an amazing thing. And the people that saw it knew that Jesus must be the son of God to accomplish those sorts of miracles and the healings that he had been doing. Mother Teresa is quoted as saying, if you can't feed a hundred people, then feed just one. When the people who had gathered pooled together all of their small resources, it became something greater than the sum of its parts. We have to be careful as human beings not to grow something that I've heard referred to as ingrown eyeballs. We have a tendency to look inwards at our own needs, at our own wants, at our own shortcomings, instead of looking outwards to the others, others in our church family, others in our communities where we live, and others in the world to see what it is that we could do or say, or petition our governments 
to do to help look after those around us. The, there is a song that I remember when I was younger in the United Church that goes like this. Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. It's just like a magic penny, hold it tight and you won't have any. Lend it, spend it, and you'll have so many. They'll roll all over the floor. Oh, love is something if you give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Love is something if you give it away. You end up having more. And now let us bow our heads and pray today's prayers of the people. Lord God, help us to care for one another and for your world. Cast out any fear that we have, any sense of inadequacy, any temptation to despair, and give us the courage, the faith, the discipline, the trust, and the love we need to offer the gifts that we have for your work in this world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today, O God, for those who are in need. We pray for those who are sick and who require your tender care. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are hungry and who require our outstretched hands, our sharing of what we have. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those who are oppressed and who require our passion and our courage, our sharing before the rulers of this world of the truth about your kingdom and your righteousness. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless all who are in need this day, O God, those that you are bringing to our hearts and minds as we pray before you. Bless them by your Spirit, that the testimony and the actions of your Holy Church and by the redemption won for them by Christ Jesus, your Son and our Savior. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all these things through your lifelong and eternal word, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray to you as our most loving parent, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go now in peace. Go in love and care for one another in the name of Christ. And may the love of God rest upon you. May the transforming grace and mercy of Christ Jesus dwell within you. And may the Holy Spirit uplift and sustain and bless you in God's service, both now and forevermore. Amen.